Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down USC and Fresno State as we enter 2019 and get you set for as many week one matchups as we can possibly get to. We get Alicia Day Artola on the line from Reign of Troy. We want to invite you to the offer that we have uh, down in the description section below, where if you grab the link next to the hashtag Sam Strong, it's for a worthy cause. I've explained it elsewhere. Uh, it's a combination of uh, a number of YouTubers getting together with St. Jude's Hospital, also betnow.eu for cancer research and to help support Sam, uh, the son of uh, volunteer roadshow Bobby Miller. Uh, so you get to 50%. No, actually, the graphic's wrong. Now they're telling me 100% added to your account. So if you throw in 100 bucks to start your betting account, you get an additional $100 added onto it and uh, use the promo code MRTBCFB. Fresno State, Alicia, of course, based on the way they approach their scheduling, very familiar with the Pac-12, two wins against the conference last year against Arizona State in the bowl game and earlier against uh, UCLA. So they're not going to be an easy out, but this may not necessarily be the same Fresno State team we saw run through the Mountain West last year, barely lose to Boise State, avenge that loss in the conference championship game. Marcus Marion moves on as a quarterback who is one of the most prolific in the history of the program. They lose a ton at wide receiver. Uh, your thoughts about Fresno State as you've kind of uh, prepped them throughout the week? Yeah, it, it's, it feels a lot like USC the last time they played Fresno State. They played them in the bowl game, and then they got them in the season opener the next year in 2014. And that team was totally different. They'd lost pretty much every their you know star quarterback, star wide receiver, everything like that. And so this this team also feels very very unknown. Uh, also a little bit like the Western Michigan team that USC faced a couple of years in their season opener, where you get this well coached, uh, well drilled, successful F, uh, uh, group of five team, but you're also getting them with replacements across the board. I think they rank 129th in returning production uh, from last year. Quarterback gone, wide receivers all gone. Uh, they get their running back and their tight end back, but uh, the offensive line, four out of five starters are gone. That's a huge deal on defense. That defense was outstanding last year. It's part of the you know big reason why they were ranked highly in, in all the analytics. They lose the entire linebacker core. They lose half of their secondary so there are a lot of gaps to fill, and it's not certain that that the players who are going to come in and replace those guys who led them to that, that conference championship, if they're going to be on the same level, especially in week one. In, I mean, maybe they'll be on the same level in week six, but in week one, there's a whole lot of, uh, of guys that you're going to be breaking in first-time starters, and that is the biggest concern I have for, for, uh, from a Fresno State perspective is if you're going to be breaking in a ton, a ton of new starters and you're going up against a USC team that is also in a similar boat where they're replacing a lot of starters and they have a lot of unknowns, all things being equal, USC has a clear talent advantage. So uh, you, you're, it's going to come down to Jeff Tedford proving that he can outcoach uh, Clay Helton, which, you know, that is a possibility. I'm not going to say it's not possible. He's going uh, to really outcoach him. But yeah, the, Jeff Tedford pulling this off, especially with he lost his offensive coordinator, Kalen DeBoer, who I'm a big fan of. He went to Indiana. So not only are they replacing quarterback, wide receivers, everything that made the, their offense tick last year, but the guy who was running the show is, is also gone. So this is going to be a big, big task for Jed, Jeff Tedford. But He's not exactly the coach that you want. If you're USC and you're recovering from five and seven and you're in need of showing that you've got, you know, uh, more of a pulse in 2019, I don't know that Jeff Tedford is the ideal coach to go up against because he's so experienced, because he's so proven, because you know he's going to have his team at a minimum well drilled. There, the, the, there's not going to be a dumpster fire of a Fresno State team. Uh, so USC is going to have to be prepared to take them on. Uh, even though they will have clear advantages in a lot of areas. Yeah, it's been a group of five program, both historically and recently, that's been very good, certainly in the top 10 rankings, but not elite like Boise State. They're always going to win 10 or 11 games or what we've seen out of UCF the last couple of years. Typically, there's a lot of eight and fours, nine and threes, and then they cycle through where they have a team like they did last year. They string together a 12-win season. They're extremely good, but 
come in, they might have a little bit of a downturn. They're still going to be good. They're still going to be difficult to deal with. Uh, like you say, most likely down the stretch of the conference schedule once these kids uh, uh, get some game reps in. Uh, uh, back to USC, uh, the air raid is the obvious storyline. But Alicia, in addition to that, any particular facets of what we're going to see on Saturday that you're fascinated to see yourself or particular players that you know, hey, this kid's got a big billing coming out of high school. I want to see him on the field. Or maybe he's been in the program for a few years, but it's his time to step up that you're interested to see respond to, to live bullets for the first time or one of the first few times. I am very intrigued by USC secondary. I have been saying all offseason, if you told me, if you just put on paper the five that USC is going to have out there, the five, I, I've sort of broken it down into the, the core seven that I think are going to see playing time for USC. Um, that's starters at, at safety, Isaiah Pulamau, Talano Hafanga. At corner, you're probably going to see Isaac Taylor Stewart, Elijah Griffin, Chris Steele, and at nickelback, you're going to see Chase Williams and Greg Johnson. All seven of those guys are top 150 prospects coming out of high school. So on paper, you tell me that's USC starting lineup, and I'm like, huh, that's pretty good. Uh, if they were more experienced, you'd feel very good about that secondary. You'd feel very strongly that that, that secondary is gonna is gonna jive. But they're all inexperienced. They're all coming off of injury. They're all none of them have ever played together. They 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 uh, they've only practiced together and more briefly than you'd like them to because half of them weren't available during spring camp because they were all injured. So you have literally three weeks of of fall camp. Uh, well, two weeks of fall camp mock game week and then this game week of them actually working together all as a unit that's not a lot of time to build the kind of chemistry and, and understanding and and uh trust level that you want from your secondary so this could go very very well for usc or very very poorly for usc and i'm most intrigued about that fresno state isn't necessarily going to be the best test because fresno state is breaking in an entirely new receiving core as well. Uh, so there will be other tests down the line where you look at them and go like, those are really established receiving cores. How does this, uh, or passing attacks, how does this secondary cope with that? But in this first game, that is the thing that, uh, that I'm most intrigued by because I really like what I've seen from Isaac Taylor Stewart in practice. I really like what I've seen from Elijah Griffin and Chris Steele in practice. I know that Talano Hofanga can be great because we saw him be great briefly in 2018 when he was starting as a true freshman before he got injured. And we know that Isaiah Polamau has that something about him that made he looked good in in the one well in the one game that he was able to play uh, in 2018. But can they all put him all put them all together? They're all going to be learning. As a, as a group, there are no veterans in there who can carry the the, the load, who can uh, provide stability. It's They're just getting thrown out there, and they're going to sink or they're going to swim, and I'm excited to see at least know which way that's going to go. Yeah, the KJ Costellos and Justin Herberts and Ian Books and their receiving cores are coming on down the line. Uh, we've yes. talked about that first six games and what a brutal stretch it is for USC. So this is a must-win to put in the book as a pretty substantial two-touchdown favorite against Fresno State. Uh, Alicia DeArtolo on the line from Reign of Troy helping us out with USC football. I probably contact like uh, and drive Alicia crazy with like two or three tweets or direct messages a week to try to bring her in because you can hear the wealth of knowledge on USC football. She's all over it, but I know you're running around trying to get everything done, so I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, for sure. I always love coming on, and yeah, I I, I feel bad because I'll get a tweet, I'll get a, a message from you, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. Where can I carve out some time? Because it is fun to come on, but you know, we, we we find find little pockets of space here or there where I can breathe and uh, and yeah, unload. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, enjoy the game, and uh, we'll see what happens with this football team. It's going to be fascinating. It will. It will indeed.